I had forgotten to plug in my microphone, so I watched the part of the video and it was wah, wah, wah. I hate that. <laughs> but we have microphone today, so. All right, Hebrews chapter 11. Boy, we are moving right along and hard to believe, but we're almost done. I don't know about you, but I've enjoyed the study through Hebrews. The issue with Hebrews is there's so much here. I mean, you could really, uh, and I hate to say it this way, but to do it justice, I mean, it would almost take a year just to go through everything because I've just tried to break it down and make it more applicable, you know, so that we're not just looking at every single word. But, man, there is a lot here, so I would encourage you just go back and 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 study Hebrews and uh, just, you know, we sometimes look at the Bible and we look at uh, these books like this and, well, that was written to those Hebrew believers, so it doesn't really apply to me. Well, it does. I mean, every bit of it does, all the way back to the Old Testament. And, you know, Genesis applies to us. It doesn't matter if it's the Word of God, it applies. So I just encourage you to go back and, and do some more study and just dig out these truths that we see in this book. Uh, so, as we as we came to a, an end in uh, chapter ten last week, in, in verse thirty eight, the writer tells the believers that the just shall live by faith. So he begins to set the stage or set the platform, if you will, for chapter eleven, because up until chapter ten, he's been teaching them on the tabernacle, teaching them about uh, the Holy Spirit, teaching them about the sacrifice, teaching them about Christ and and Christ being superior in all these areas. But then he comes to this topic of faith. So at the end of chapter 10, he says, all of these things that you've learned and everything that's going on, you now need to learn to live by faith. Understanding that in their time, as we touched on last week, it was a very difficult time to be a Christian. You know, the different persecutions that were going on, different trials and different aspects of life that were just so difficult that to be a Christian in that time, the temptation to turn back and the temptation to reject Christ and and reject that lifestyle would have been greater than probably anything you and I could ever experience. Now, I know that today, you know, in, this, in our world, we see persecution in other countries. You know, Christians are, are being put to death in, in uh, you know, Arab countries and Muslim countries and things of that nature. But here in America, we're pretty free to worship how we choose, and there are very few restrictions so far on our faith. They didn't have that. So this temptation to turn back was a great temptation. And he's telling them, you just need to live by faith. And I think all of us know that when you're going through a trial, when you're going through a hard time, that's difficult to do, isn't it? You know, when hardship comes, faith is really hard. And many times, as the old saying goes, that oftentimes faith, faith borders on foolishness. Because when the world looks at our faith and they say, well, that doesn't make any sense. You all are crazy. Why would you do that? Well, it's faith. We trust, we understand, we believe that God will take care of us, that God will provide, and by faith, we continue to serve. We continue to trust. All right, so... This entire chapter, we know, we call it the, the Faith Hall of Fame, if you will, but this entire chapter of 11 is all on faith. Everything is, is leading them towards faith. And, and so we're going to look at this, this faith illustrated in this chapter, but he gives them three truths in this chapter that we as believers need to kind of try to wrap our minds around. All right. So first of all, beginning in, in chapter 11, we see faith defined. Faith defined in the first three verses of this chapter. He says, now faith, building on chapter 10, verse 38. He says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Now, that seems almost questionable. What in the world does that even mean? How many of you have ever read that verse and thought, what? That doesn't make sense. 
So just kind of breaking this down, notice first of all in this verse, he says, he says, faith is. He didn't say faith was. He didn't say faith could be. He said faith is. So this is present tense. This is your faith right now. It is the substance of things hoped for. So now, again, we're not getting deep here. We're not trying to, to dissect every single verse in this chapter, but we need to understand what he's saying here because we understand substance. It, it's a thing. It has substance. It has object, you know, It's something that I can feel. It's tangible, right? It has substance to it. So he's saying faith is the substance, but, but that word substance that he uses there, and I have to read this because it's a weird one, is the Greek word hypostasis. Don't you love those Greek words? I sometimes read Greek and I go, they were just making that up. You know? But hypostasis means confidence. So what he's saying here is that, that faith is confidence of the things hoped for. So when we pray, when we when we have a need, when we when we have a, a desire even, and we pray for God to meet that need or meet that desire, you know, when we pray in His will, we have the confidence that that prayer, that request that we hope for, it's already met, even though we haven't yet received it. That's what He's saying here. So it's the confidence in things hoped for or expected. You know, we expect God to answer because He's answered in the past. He's taken care of our needs before. And so we have confidence in God through Christ. We have confidence in our prayer because we have confidence in a faithful God. And that's what he's saying here. So, so faith is the substance of things hoped for. We have confidence in that. We have confidence in Christ, confidence in our, in our creator. He says the evidence of things not seen. Now, we all know what evidence is. You know, if you've ever been to a trial, what do they do? They present evidence to prove their case, right? Well, it, it's, it's simply proof that God will answer. What evidence do we have that God will answer our prayer or meet our need? Well, he's done it in the past. Has he not? You know, John R. Rice wrote in his book, uh, Prayer, Asking and Receiving, that every child of God should have daily answers to prayer. Now think about that. Do you have daily answers to prayer? You say, well, I doubt it. Well, now, hold on. Because a lot of times when we think about an answer to prayer, we're thinking about the big things. You know, God, I need to get this bill paid, and if I don't get this bill paid, God, they're going to kick me out or they're going to shut my lights off. And God, I need something done. Anybody ever been like that? I think we've all been there at one point. You know, God, we need you to provide. And it's not answered, and it's not answered, and it's not answered. Because he wants us to trust by faith, right? But there are many times throughout the day that God answers those little prayers, and we fail to acknowledge it. And, and, and I, I, I kid you not, every single morning that I wake up, my first prayer is, God, just give me the strength to get through this day. Anybody else like that? And how many times have you laid your head down on your bed at night and said, God, thank you for giving me the strength to get through that day? Because he did. I mean, I need his strength every single day. And if I don't pray that prayer before I get out of bed, I certainly pray it before I walk across the room because I remember I can't even move. <laughs> right? I mean, I, we need God every day. So we, we tend to forget those little prayers that he answers every single day that by faith we know he's answered. We've seen the evidence. It's the evidence of things not seen when we pray for something that we need. Well, it's as if God has already answered, so I don't have to worry, I don't have to fret. So faith, it's the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. When I pray, I know that God's going to answer, so it's as if I've already obtained what I prayed for. That's what he's saying here. Now, I can understand why he's trying to get these, these Hebrew believers to understand this because they're going through some difficult times. They're going through trials. They're going through hardships. And he's saying, you need to walk by faith. 
By faith, Christ will get you through this. God will take care of you. It may not have been a comfort to them at the moment because I don't know exactly everything that they were facing. Just like it's not always a comfort to us, is it? But it doesn't negate the truth. I mean, God is faithful. Therefore, our faith in Him should be strong. Look at verse 2. He says in verse 2, For by it, or by faith, the elders obtained a good report. So it, it was the faith of the elders, and, and again, these Hebrew believers would have understood this, because he's referring to those Old Testament prophets and the Old Testament saints. He's saying, by faith, the elders received a good report. So we look at their lives, and, and you know they stand out in our memories because of their great faith, because of the great things that they've done for God. You know, think about our society. Think about our lifetime. How many great men of God can you think of that did amazing things? You know, I mean, really, I mean, a lot of people that you talk to, if you talk to any, especially in the South, if you talk to anyone about Christ, you know, one of, inevitably, one of the things they're going to say is, oh, yeah, I heard a Billy Graham crusade, and, and I got saved because I heard Billy Graham preach. And, you think about how much he touched the lives of America. I mean, the people in America, I mean, I remember growing up and having Billy Graham crusades on the TV. And I, I mean, that's unheard of. And it wasn't just on TBN. It was on every channel. Of course, back then we only had three. But, but you know, if Billy Graham crusade was on, you weren't watching anything else. And I'm thinking, wow, that's amazing. I mean, that one man and his faith touched an entire world. Did you know that Queen Elizabeth was touched by Billy Graham? I mean, she saw his crusades on the television, and when he came to England, she said, I've got to meet this man. Do you think about their great faith? I wonder if we could do the same thing. And that's what he's saying here. You know these, these elders, you know these men, these, these great prophets, these great men of the past, you know their faith. You saw what they did. You saw their hardships. You saw their trials. But yet they stayed faithful. And you can do the same. So it's an encouragement to them because of what they've already seen in someone else's lives. You know, we could be that individual for other people. When we go through trials, we go through difficulties, and people see us stand strong in our faith, that can encourage them to do the same thing. All right, verse 3. It says in verse 3, Through faith we understand that the, wor the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. So very simply here, he's reminding them, you know, God created everything that we see. God spoke and the worlds came into existence. None of us were there to see that. None of us experienced that, but we believe it. We weren't there at creation, but we have the Word of God that tells us exactly how the worlds were framed, exactly how God created everything. Jesus, the Word of God, spoke, and everything was created. And by faith, we believe that. Now, here's the thing. If we believe that by faith, and we believe for by grace are you saved through faith, then why can we not by faith believe that he's going to meet every single need that we have every day? Do you see what he's trying to get them to understand here? And we need to understand the same thing. This is, this is faith defined. So when we look at this and we say, well, yeah, I, I've got faith, but, you know, who is that man that came to Jesus and says, if thou believest, thou will. And he says, Master, I believe, but I have some doubts. <laughs> yes, sir. Oh. Yes.
hope that we've all forgotten the trust that this might be the year of faith. Oh. <laughs> now, how much? Sure. Right. And everyone looked at that opportunity as now I can escape. And he was just trying. Yeah. And it took a lot of faith to stay. And that's the whole point. You know, in America, we don't face those trials. You know, you might go to work and the boss say, well, you can't talk to people about Jesus when you're at work. Oh, I'm being persecuted. That's not persecution. You know, there are ways around that. You know, you're not going to lose your life. Well, I could lose my job. Listen, this is America. Go get another job. You know, (laughs) I mean... Come on, we're not facing things like that. We're not facing fear of death for our faith. So the American people have no excuse to not live and walk by faith because we have nothing fighting against us. And when we see great faith like that in another country where they could have lost their life, they could have been murdered simply for believing or simply having church, you know, and we look at that and we go, wow, what great faith. That, again, should encourage us to do even more for Christ. You know, I've been to third world countries, and I've seen the way people live, and they still love Christ. And you're going, that's amazing. You don't even have a front door on your house, and you're praising God for what you have. You know, and here we sit behind our fancy walls and have air conditioning and food on the table, and we go, oh, we just got it so rough. We need faith like they have. So we see the faith defined here, but then uh, beginning in verse 4, and this runs down through verse uh, 31. We may not read all of these, but now we see faith demonstrated. So he's defined faith for them, and now he's giving them some examples here by showing faith demonstrated through their their, uh, religious leaders or their fathers, if you will, in the faith. In verse 4 it says, By faith Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and by it he being dead yet speaketh. So again, we know know the story of Abel. We know Cain and Abel. Cain brought his, his sacrifice to God, his offering, if you will, of his fields, his crops, and, and he brought that to God. And, and what did Abel bring? Well, he brought one of his flock. He brought a blood sacrifice. Now, think about that, folks. A lot of times we, we kind of glaze over this. But Cain and Abel were the children, the first children of Adam and Eve, the first people. All right? So sin entered into the world through Adam and Eve. And with Abel and the story of Cain and Abel, we have the first blood sacrifice. Now we know, you know, God used animal skins to cover Adam and Eve and you could call that a blood sacrifice, but this is a first example of a believer coming to God on their own and offering a blood sacrifice. What was that? That was a picture by faith of what was to come. So what was Abel looking to? He was looking to the cross. He was looking for that that need for blood to cover the sin. So, again, all the way back, we see Christ in the Old Testament. We see Christ at at Abel's sacrifice, and and the Bible speaking of him and his faith to even bring that sacrifice, all right? And in verse 5 and 6, he says, By faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him, for before before his translation he had this testimony that he pleased God. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that, he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So again, the, the uh, acknowledgement of Enoch here, who the Bible says walked with God and he was not, for God took him. 
So he walked with God and was so righteous in his day. And the Bible tells us, I believe it's over in the book of Jude, that he was a righteous preacher. He preached against the sins of the day. And so he was so holy, he was so righteous with God and had so much faith that God allowed him to not even see death. He just took him. You know, and we talk oftentimes of the, the uh, uh, revelation and the two saints that are going to come, and there's a lot of question as to who those two saints are going to be. Personally, I believe it's going to be Enoch and Elijah because those are the only two people in the Bible that we see that didn't experience a physical death. God just took them. So I believe it's going to be them. Now, that's neither here nor there, and it probably doesn't really matter. But what an amazing testimony of faith that he walked with God so closely that God said, man, I just want to bring him home. I just want him to be with me. And just an amazing testimony of Enoch. So they would have understood this. They would have, they would have known of his day, you know, because he was in the days of Noah and understood the, the, the sin and the debauchery and everything going on. And he was, he was in the lineage of Noah, so he was part of Noah's family. And they would have understood all of this. And so he's giving them this, this demonstration or this example of faith. And, and he says in verse 6, without faith, it is impossible to please God. Notice he didn't say it was hard. He didn't say it was difficult. He said it's impossible. So if you want to please God, you want to have a life that's pleasing to God, walk by faith. It's that simple. And God will reward that. He says right there, he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Okay? All right, in verse 7, verse 7 again, it says, By faith Noah, being warned of God of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness, which is by faith. Now, you know... Oftentimes, again, I say this a lot, but we read the Bible and we just kind of, in our minds, we just go, oh, yeah, I've heard that a million times. Noah and the ark, okay, Noah brought the animals two by two, yeah, yeah, blah, blah, blah. You understand the great faith that Noah had to have to do what he did? I mean, I want you to really think about this. God came to Noah and he says, Noah, I'm going to destroy the whole world with a flood. I'm going to make it rain, Noah. Rain? What's, what's rain, God? Well, water's going to fall from the sky. Now, that's a big deal because it had never rained on the earth before. And the Bible tells us that in Genesis. That the, the earth was watered with a dew that came up from the ground. It had, they had never seen or experienced a raindrop in their lives. And God tells Noah it's going to rain. And by faith, Noah believed God and said, I've got to build an ark. And this thing's 500 feet long. I mean, how do you do that? Just Noah and his three sons. It takes faith. I mean, what an amazing example of faith that we oftentimes just push aside because it's a cute little children's story. It's not a cute little children's story. It's a story of great and amazing faith that you and I can learn from and say, man, Noah had no idea what rain was, but he still believed God. I mean, do you ever look at God sometimes and say, God, I don't understand what's going on. I don't know why you're allowing this in my life. It just doesn't make sense. You know, a lot of people quit because of that. A lot of people, like these Hebrew believers, they're tempted to turn their back on God because they get stuck in a situation that they can't understand and they can't see a way out and they can't figure out. But the truth of the matter is, if we could figure it out, if we could fix it, if we could change it, we don't need faith, Right? But God's saying, look, when these times come and you don't know what's going on and you can't see the plan, just trust me. Walk by faith. And that's the example that he has of Noah here. I mean, Noah built the ark not even knowing what rain was, but he believed that God knew what he was talking about. Verse 8. Verse 8 says, By faith Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, obeyed. And he went out not knowing whither he went. By faith he sojourned in the land of promise as in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him 
of the same promise. For he looked for a city which hath foundations, whose builder and maker is God. Now, I don't know about you, but I find the story of Abraham pretty intriguing. Because God comes to Abraham and he tells Abraham, Abraham, I want you to leave your home. I want you to leave Ur of Chaldees, leave your father, leave your family, and I want you to go to a land that I'll show you later. I want you to pack for this trip, and I want you to go. I want you to leave, but I'm not going to tell you yet where you're going. Now, my wife and I try this with our boys. You know, when we plan a vacation, you know, and it's a surprise. You know, so we don't tell them where where the, where we're going. Now, we know where we're going because we have to plan the trip. You know, we have to plan what time to leave. We have to plan what to pack. And, you know, we have to put everything in place. And they just have to get in the car and, by faith, understand that we know where we're going. Right? Well, this is this is what Abraham did. Can, can you imagine, all right, ladies, if your husband came to you and said, hey, guess what? God wants us to go on a trip. Well, where are we going? I don't know. Well, what do I need to pack? I don't know. When are we going to get there? I don't know. How will we know when we'll be there? I don't know. God will just tell us. That'd go over real well, wouldn't it? But you know that's what he had to say to Sarah? Sarah? I mean, think about it. He had no idea where he was going. And he says right there in those verses, he said, he went out not knowing where he went. He had no clue, no idea where God was leading him, but God said go, so he said, all right, let's go. You know, we don't know where we're going, we don't know what we're doing, we don't know what we need, so we might as well pack up and take everything. Right? Think about it. Did that not take faith? Now, in the Hebrew believers, they would have understood that Abraham was their father of the faith. And they would have understand this, this story, if you will. And so it would have meant a lot to them to know that and Abraham just packed up and hit the road, didn't know where he was going, didn't know what was going to happen, but he just trusted God by faith. What an amazing example of faith. And you can understand why he's in the faith chapter or the faith hall of fame. But look at verse 11. Verse 11 says, Through faith also Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed and was delivered of a child when she was past age because she judged him faithful who had promised. Therefore sprang there even of one and him as good as dead so many as the stars of the sky in multitude, and as the sand which is by the seashore innumerable. <laughs> you, know, you, you, you ever just kind of think, is this real? I mean, Sarah was 99 years old when God said, you're going to have a baby. What's the, what's the normal age today that women stop having children? Like 35, 40? You know, they said, <laughs> no more, we're done, right? 99 years old. Now, we know the story. You know, when, when, when Sarah heard this and she laughed and God says, wherefore did Sarah laugh? You know, and that would have been a shock, wouldn't it? Because, <laughs> Sarah, how does he know I laughed? Because he knows everything. But they trusted God and they, by faith, had seed innumerable. So through their children, their seed, they had so many children in their lineage that it was like the sands of the seashore. You couldn't number them. So even Sarah makes it into this hall of faith because she was 99 years old when she had Isaac. I couldn't imagine. I mean, I, I'm 54. I don't want a baby in the house. No, no. I think at that point you go down and dip them in the stream. You know, we're not changing diapers. Yeah, you go now. You, you know, <laughs> train them like a dog. You know, <laughs> are you got to go out? All right. I mean, can you imagine? Now, I, I understand. You know, at that time, the world was a different place, and people did live longer, and and their health issues were different than what we have because they were still. And a lot of people don't understand. Maybe we'll d discuss this sometime. You know, in the book of Genesis, the world was perfect. 
I mean, there was no disease, there was no sickness, there was, there was, I mean, when Adam and Eve were created, there was no death until sin came in. And then it was a gradual degression because of the curse of sin. But then it wasn't until after the flood that men really started dying younger. So, I mean, you had Methuselah that was, what, 969 years old. You know, people lived a lot longer back then. So 100 years old was still old, but, man. What faith. What an amazing example of faith. And then verse, uh, uh, where are we at here? Sorry. Oh, we're going to skip verse 13 through 16 for a minute. So go down to verse 17. Verse 17, it says again, By faith Abraham, when he was tried, still on that theme of Abraham and Sarah, When he was tried, offered up Isaac, and he that had received the the promises offered up his only begotten son, of whom it was said that in Isaac shall thy seed be called, accounting that God was able to raise him up even from the dead, from whence also he received him in a figure. So now think about this. Still on this idea of Abraham and Sarah, and they have a child You know, she's 99 years old. Abraham's 100 years old. This Isaac is the child of promise. All right, so God said, you're going to have a child, and and his seed is going to be innumerable. And now God comes to Abraham, and he says, Abraham, I want you to take Isaac, and I want you to sacrifice him to me. God, this doesn't make sense. But what did it say there? That Abraham, by faith, offered, catch the phrasing, his only begotten son. He had another son, didn't he? But his son didn't come through the promise. You know, Ishmael did not come through the promise of God. Ishmael came through the flesh. So Isaac was that promised one. Isaac was that promised child. Isaac was that only begotten that Abraham was then told to sacrifice. This was an old picture, an Old Testament picture of Christ. And God giving his only begotten son to be sacrificed for mankind. So Abraham had to, by faith, trust that, you know, God, you know what you're doing. And you said that Abraham's seed would be innumerable. So if I sacrifice my son, then you're just going to have to raise him from the dead. And I know that I can do this because I know you're faithful. And I, by faith, can trust you to keep your word because this is my only son. You see this picture of faith? And then, now we know the story. We know that you know he got him up there on the mountain and he raised the knife. He was ready to take his son's life. I mean, I couldn't, I couldn't imagine the great faith that this had to take. And God says, wait a minute. Abraham, stop. I know now that you will not hold anything back from me. I know now that you'll trust me. I know now your faith is strong. And there's a ram in a thicket. Do you remember what Abraham told Isaac when they were walking up the mountain? And Isaac said, Father, here's the wood and here's the fire, but where's the sacrifice? (laughs) Maybe there's a little fear there. (laughs) And Abraham says to his son, God will provide. That's faith. You don't worry, son. Now, Abraham knew. He knew who the sacrifice was, didn't he? He knew what was about to take place. But he also knew, somehow, some way, God will provide. Even if it's through raising Isaac from the dead, God will provide. Isaac, yeah. Now think about that. Oh, man. One of these days we're going to have to go through that because that that is an amazing picture of Christ. Man. To be Isaac and to say, Father, why? Why are you putting me on this altar? Because this is what God wants. So, I mean, there had to be faith in Isaac as well. Maybe he was putting his faith in Abraham. Maybe he was putting his faith in God. But there's a lot of faith displayed in that one example. And we read it and we go, oh, yeah, that's pretty cool. No, that's amazing. And this is the kind of faith that the writer is trying to get these Hebrew believers to understand. You don't see what God has planned. 
You might be going through a hard time. You might be going through difficulties right now. You might think that there's no hope. But if you would just walk by faith, you will see God's great deliverance and you'll see God do things that you could never imagine possible. Even Abraham said, Lord, if I do this, you're going to have to raise him from the dead and I'm going to trust you to do so. Great faith. Obviously, we don't have time to go through all of these today, so we're going to stop there and we'll pick it up next week. But uh, just, man, an encouragement. Go back and read some of these stories. You know, the, these examples in, in Hebrews 11 just give us a little picture of it. But go back and, and dig these passages out and, and just study what God has done for these people. Study the life of Enoch. Study uh, A Cain and Abel. Study Adam and Eve. Study Abraham. Study Sarah. Study Noah. I mean, just when you see this great faith and we look at our world and we think, Man, you know, groceries are $300 more a week, not a month. <laughs> you know, and, and a, the electric bill is going crazy, and we're just not going to make it, and Biden's a moron, and I just got kicked off Facebook. You know, I mean, when you see those things and you go, where is God? It's faith. Because without faith, it is impossible to please him. Amen? Let's pray. We'll get back into this next week. Father, we thank you, Lord, again for this time, and thank you for these lessons of faith that we can see. And, uh, Lord, just pray you'd help each one of us to understand and to walk by faith each and every single day. And Lord, we pray that you'd just be with the service to follow, be with pastors. He brings the message this morning. May it be exactly what we need for our lives. In Christ's name we pray.